in, it's in Sear Milk Farm, and today I'm doing a video on rabbit butchering, and we're going to start off with this little girl here. I'm just going to walk you through the steps of uh, butchering rabbit from the actual killing process to um, skinning it and then gutting it and getting it ready for your freezer. Um, this little girl here is about six months old. Um, some people don't choose to wait quite that long. Um, they can be butchered as early as 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, my friend Tahara, whose rabbits I'm butchering, um, likes to let them get a little bit bigger, so that's why this one's about six months old. Um, but anyway, we're going to take care of this first. Oh, I wanted to say, if you are offended by this in any way, or this kind of thing would upset you or make you ill, please do not watch the rest of this video. Just turn it off. Um, so, if not, keep watching and hopefully you will learn something today. Okay, so now um, we're actually going to do the process. I do the broomstick method. I mean, some people choose to shoot the rabbits. Um, some people will hit them over the head to stun them and then kill them. The broomstick method is seems to be, um, for what I found, the easiest. Uh, it's very quick. It's basically breaking their neck. It's called cervical dislocation. And the rabbit um, is pretty much killed immediately. There will be some muscle movement. You'll see the rabbit spasming in most cases for a few minutes. I just wait till that's all over with before I hang them and start skinning them. But um, the rabbit at that point is in no pain, even though it does look violent. Um, once their head is severed, um, they're, they're done. They, they don't feel any pain or anything else after that. So let me just get her down here on the ground. And then my friend Tahara is also stepping on the other. Usually it's best to have two people. It makes it easier. You just pull up and you actually can feel that head sever from the body. And like I said, she's, she's already done. She doesn't feel anything at this point. Um, it's, this is just all the nerves in the body um, reacting. So I'm just going to let her go for a minute. And uh, when she's finished kicking, then we're going to hang her. What I usually do too is then when it seems like she's finished, um, I'll pick, yeah, I can feel a little nerve spasming in here, but I'll pick them up and give them a good shake and, yeah, you see the legs still moving a little bit. Again, she's not alive. Her head is it's an internal decapitation. Her head is actually severed um, on the inside, but again, those nerves are still causing her body to uh, spasm a little bit, but I think she's done spasming, so I'm going to come over here to this tree. This is how I um, hang them. Uh, you, can, you can actually buy things um, online that you can actually hang the foot. Um, there's a, I, I don't remember the name of it, but they're, they have the whole setup, the, the rabbit ringer, I believe it's called. <laughs> you put your, the head in and you can actually pull straight out. It actually uh, severs the head right there. It's like a hook. And then um, it has a station where you can actually hang it. So this, I found this method, I mean, it, that, that certainly works good. I have friends that use it, but um, I found this method works fine for me. So what I do is I just take the one, I already have my, I use my baler twine from my hay bales and I just tie it here around the foot, tie the one side. Get a good tight knot because you're gonna be pulling and you don't want the rabbit to come with you. So take the other foot, again, just tie the knot here, and then one final knot to make sure it doesn't come loose. Then I'll just tug on it a little bit to make sure that I don't quite have them even, but that'll be okay. One final tug to make sure it's tight. Um, pause it a second. Um, so now that we have her hung, um, 
you want to feel right here around the joint. And I can't stress the importance of having a good sharp knife. Unfortunately, it's time for me to go and get some new knives. Um, this knife is not the sharpest one in the drawer, um, but I need I need to get a, a new set of butchering knives, but it'll work for now, but boy, does it make your life a lot easier when you have a good sharp knife. So I start, I cut a complete circle around the hocks. And then you gotta kind of be very careful when you're doing this. I just kind of pull some of that hair off. You see how it's already separating? You can see the leg bone here. Just cut right very carefully. I already had a boo-boo earlier today. Um, cut right through that tendon and see how that just released real nice like that. Do the same with the other foot right around the hock there. Cut through that tendon. Again, just don't rub your fingers along the knife. You just want to kind of pull that hair, that hair off very, very carefully. Can't stress to you enough the importance of being careful that you don't cut yourself. So those are both free now. You can see it's almost like they're wearing socks here. Um, so at this point, um, this is how I do it. I've seen other people do it different ways, how they start cutting down. Um, this is my method. If you find something else that works better for you, by all means do it. But I will just start cutting straight down the leg. Be careful not to cut in, keep cleaning that knife off. Be careful not to cut into the meat because here's where you're getting into the meat. You can see the muscle there. Just do real light strokes. Back of my knife here is sharper than up at the top, so I'm just kind of coming with the back of my knife. By the way, Tahara, what breed did you say this one was? Probably New Zealand Silver Fox. New Zealand Silver Fox. There are numerous meat breeds. Um, some people like Tahara have more than one meat breed, and what they do is they crossbreed it, which actually produces a very fast-growing rabbit. A popular one is a New Zealand White and a Californian cross, but people cross um, silver foxes with New Zealand, silver foxes with Champagne Darjons. Um, you can do New Zealands with pretty much everything. Um, so it's good. I mean, you, if you start off with two purebreds and then um, do the cross and then, you know, butcher the babies, you can get some real nice fast growing meat rabbits. Um, now, in here, you can see, see that. I don't know, I'm getting that. Um, there's like connective tissue. Very carefully just take your knife and poke through and then I just bring my finger up, tear that, and then I'm just gonna come around with my knife standing out of the way and I'm gonna cut it. And see, this is releasing the whole abdominal cavity. And then up here, you can see that uh, there's a, it's connected. So I just start, you just, kind of tease it with the knife a little till it releases and you can I don't know can you bring the camera around the back mm -hmm. I'm gonna walk around the back of this oh is it, is it still on mm -hmm. I'm gonna walk around the back of the rabbit here and um, start coming up from from behind again just lightly teasing you don't want to take any meat if you do it's okay just cut that meat right off of the skin then don't keep pulling. If you see you're pulling meat along with it, just stop what you're doing and then just cut the meat free from the skin so you don't pull the, all the meat with it and waste the meat. So I'm just teasing it with the back of my knife again. It's just coming right off. This one is sure a lot easier than the last one we did. The last one we did was a year old. And the older they get, honestly, the more difficult they are to butcher. Um, the young kits go real, real fast. Um, I do them, like I said, about about eight, I mean, uh, 10 to 12 weeks. So, um, but this, this girl's going, see how the meat is coming down here. So I'm going to stop. I'm not going to keep pulling there because I don't want to pull that meat off. So I just tease the knife in there. Let's get my hand over here. Fur, rabbits are very furry and it just keeps catching on the knife there making it difficult so just keep, just keep doing it just keep uh, cleaning your knife off otherwise you're just gonna be struggling okay now let's see that that's just I don't know if you could hear that too it's just tearing right down which is exactly what you want once you release it around the legs 
it comes off almost like a t-shirt so I'm just gonna set my knife down right here on the ground and I'm gonna pull can are you able to get that mm -hmm. see how it's just it's almost like taking off your sweatshirt we're pulling all the way down as you can see here's where her head is and I you want to be careful because this is where all the blood starts coming out and I've gotten covered already and you can see the head I don't have to cut anything the head is already severed um, I'm just gonna cut that little piece of connective tissue there and there's the feet and we're gonna pull that right off and now she's got little but we're gonna take care of that up at the table so then here's the skin um, um, you want so we just got that skin off there um, and so I'm gonna take her down from the tree and then we're gonna go up I have a table set up up at the top of the the yard here and then we're gonna finish her okay. up at the top so okay so we have the rabbit up here at the table and I don't know are you able to zoom in mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see this but all this quivering in here the rabbit is I can't stress enough the rabbit is not alive this is all muscle movement um, it's just the nerves I'm uh, not muscle excuse me the nerve movement um, this is all just the nerves in the rabbit it, it will eventually stop but it takes a while sometimes um, so it's nothing to be alarmed about. It's perfectly normal. So the rabbit's, he doesn't have his head, doesn't have his skin, it's dead. So first thing I do when I bring it back up here to the table is I snip off the feet. We have this nice shears here and this literally just goes right through the bone. It comes right off. Now there's some tendon there so I just cut through that, throw that aside. It makes life so much easier when you just snip right through than try to break the bones or try to cut around the tendon. So I found this to be the best, quickest method. Oop, there goes my knife. And then, like I said, you're just cutting now. I'm just cutting the connective tissue there. Just be real careful. I'm <laughs> Sometimes uh, I'm not the wisest with the knife, but just be real careful so you don't cut yourself. So got the last foot here. And then I'm going to flip him around, or her I should say, and then we're going to do the same thing with the tail. We're going to take the tail off. I'm going to cut right through with my shears, right through that tailbone, and then use my knife. That's the wrong knife. That knife is even more dull than the one I'm using. Just cut right through that uh, connective tissue. So now is the part where you're going to be opening up the body cavity. So I just kind of flip them, flip her on her back, and then I just kind of poke a little bit in there. And you want to have a little hole. Some people start at the bottom and work up. I just actually will start this end and work down. Um, you just want to get the knife under the skin, and you're basically it's almost like there's a, actually a midline here on the rabbit, and you just want to cut through that midline all the way down. Be very careful if I don't, can you zoom that in? Right inside is the body cavity. You don't want to slice into those intestines. They'll have a mess all over. And um, unless you get act quickly and rinse it out, it can actually spoil your meat because of all that bacteria. So just be real careful. Slice all the way down through. And the body cavity is open. Now this here is the bladder. Um, it's best to withdraw water the night before so they have a very empty bladder. Sometimes even if you draw wa withdraw water the night before, they still have a full bladder. Um, this girl thankfully doesn't. You see, it's almost like a, a water balloon. You just come along and you just cut that. And it's right there. Just throw it in your slop bucket. And then you just turn the rabbit upside down and then most of this stuff will spill out. Um, just pull these are the kidneys if you want to some people eat the kidneys or feed them to their pets if they're doing a raw food diet so you can set those aside um, the livers in here which I'll show you in a minute if you decide you want to eat the liver or feed it to your pets um, the liver is very important um, to let me release it here from the rest of the in, uh, organs but if you flip the liver over there's a little sack right here this is the gallbladder the stuff in here is more toxic than the stuff that's in the intestines. So what you want to do is just find, it's a little sack, you want to find it and then you pinch it off 
being very careful not to spill the contents. And then just throw it in your slop bucket or wherever you throw it. And then there, the liver's perfectly fine then to keep for eating. Um, the rest of the stuff, there's nothing in here that's of use. Um, now up here, inside, this is the diaphragm. This is where the heart and lungs are located. So you cut into that, release that, and then you pull, you can reach in there and just pull the lungs out. And then once you get the lungs out, hold on, there's a little piece in here yet. <laughs> okay. Then you can reach up and get the heart. And the heart is another organ that is, you can eat that or again, just feed that to your pets. Some people choose to feed all the, the, in, the gut intestines and everything to their pets um, because wild animals eat that when they eat the um, when they eat an animal that they've killed. Um, I don't. I, I'll feed this to my dog, but I, I just I figure if it's not good enough for me, it's not good enough for them. So the lungs would be okay. I mean, if you want to feed the lungs to your dog um, or your cat, that's fine. But just throw that in the slop bucket. So anyway, then you want to just that's pretty much it. The rabbit is ready to be washed really wash good and then we have an ice bucket here that we're going to put them in the ice um, and then it'll be ready to be either you can age it for a couple days in your fridge um, some people soak it in brine for 24 hours just to draw everything out um, and then some people just throw it right in their freezer um, which I mean the meat will be a little bit more tough if you don't age it um, but we've eaten it we've actually taken it right up from down back here and cooked it that particular day and we had rabbit pie and stuff so it's it's entirely up to you what you want to do but that's pretty much it that's butchering a rabbit I wonder if I just stuff